I am Bobby Welch. Welcome back to another exciting video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications. Let's get it. Okay. Uh, I did a little research. I found out that this console is going to be twice as powerful as the Xbox One X. Eight times powerful as the Xbox One. Microsoft really to try to make this the most powerful console in the market. It has backwards compatibility. Um, Zen 2 Navi architecture. I'm not sure what that is. 12 teraflops, meaning it can handle up to 12 trillion operations a second. Um, the PS5 is going to have like 10.28, which is still a lot. Um, basically, this console is going to be surreal. Uh, GDD R6 per ROM, I'm not sure what that is. 120 hertz refresh rates. Um, they're literally aiming to eliminate loading times. So this game's not even gonna load. As soon as you click a screen, it's gonna go to the next screen. Like, and on top of that, it's gonna be able to run up to 8K. I'm excited to uh, review this. I'm actually excited. I can't wait for it to come out so I can play it. I'm saying, if you're new to the channel, like, comment, and subscribe, as well as turn on post notifications. Without further ado. Let's go. So we have some unusual boxes that showed up. They're very nondescript. There's a couple of stickers. You see the word Xbox there. Inside of here is going to be my best look, your best look yet at the next generation consoles from Microsoft. We have some code names on here, like look at this one, Project Stockton, Project Toledo. It's important to note, these are kind of, uh, they're non-functional. That's the reason the boxes are so light. I wanna see the form factor, especially, actually I might be more interested in the little guy. We got all the details recently on Series S. We just found out that it's going to be more affordable than a lot of people thought. But anyways, let's kick it off with the big boy first. I'm guessing that's in this box. And then we'll compare the two and give you a sense for scale. Maybe I'll compare them to some other things around here. So uh, you guys can get a better idea of what to expect when these actually become available. Starting it off with Project Toledo. It's not like a leak or something like that. These are actually from Microsoft. So this is the official final design of each of these units. And actually, even this one is smaller than I thought. Looking at it in pictures, this will be your Series X. That's the one I was talking about where uh, it's going to be eight times powerful as the Xbox One. talking about this shape on Lou later I, I called it a rectangular prism others said Lou don't you remember primary school it's called a cuboid you could call it either Those are acceptable terms I've never heard cuboid in my life it's a real thing would you check out this cuboid whoa cool that is much smaller than I expected I was a bit concerned when I saw the initial images, I was like, how do you put that thing underneath a TV in a, an actual... I bet you can lay it flat. ...entertainment kind of, or what about even on a desk? It was a little bit strange, but it's actually not that huge. And when you consider the horsepower they've been able to pack in here, it's uh, borderline impressive. And, I mean, of course, we're going to have 12 teraflops of power. And I'll take as many as I can get. Uh, so you've also got the super fast NVMe SSD in there, one terabyte of storage compared to 512 on the other unit. So, uh, so yeah, it's going to have a, a tremendous amount of power, the most power ever in an Xbox, and uh, an unusual form factor. It has this large base. 
I guess my only question is, is it going to have like a cooling system, like a fan? Kind of how I like the PS3 was. With all that horsepower, I kind of wonder, is it going to like overheat and get hot? Down here on the bottom, so it can stick and stand like that. But I also noticed straight away, you do have feet on it. So, yes, you can lay it down. Now, I don't know what type of furniture you're dealing with, whether or not you can find a good spot for that. But I think some users will actually go this way with it. And it appears that Microsoft is telling you you can because you have feet on that side of the unit. Now, the way I'm handling it, yes, it's lightweight. The components are not on the inside. That's important to know. This model obviously also has a disk drive slot, a singular eject button, the Xbox button over here, which looks to be backlit or will eventually be backlit. There looks to be some kind of a sync button for your controllers. Also, a singular USB Type A port on the front. A little bit of Xbox branding up here. And then as we flip it around to the back, we have two more USB A with the SS indicator above there. We have storage expansion as well. If you need more storage than the one terabyte that's baked in, you have a network port for your Ethernet. There's an HDMI out and then your power connection in that section right there. So that kind of rounds out the visual appearance. If you look at the screen, it says uh, the Xbox One X weighs about three points kilograms and then it says the Xbox one weighed 3.5 so slightly heavier but really still lightweight Prince of the series X now let's go ahead and compare the arguably as exciting um, maybe more exciting to some people series s which we just got all the details for this one just got uncovered project stockton and originally the renders kind of had this thing as an actual cube but it turns out it's also some type of prism and it is tiny now i don't know what this is meant to compete with of course it doesn't have the horsepower of the series x so maybe it goes up against something like the nintendo switch or maybe it just pulls users away from sony because the entry price point on this is set to be 299 which is just give me a second y'all i'm about to look up the horsepower for the series s Okay, so the Series S has four teraflops versus the 12.15 teraflops. Microsoft reveals Xbox Series S specs, promises four times the processing power of the Xbox One. Okay, so the Series S is four times as powerful. The Series X is eight times. Series S is going to be $299. Um, it doesn't really say the price for the Series X, but I'm guessing it's going to be like double that. My bad, uh, my uh, camera on my phone ran out. I got to finish this video on my laptop. Let's see. Next generation console of any kind. 
keep in mind this model is going to be targeted at 1440p gaming up to 120 frames per second as opposed yeah. to the 4k target of the series x but i think uh, yeah. i think for a lot of users that may be okay given the price discrepancy 299 so for 299 you get 4k and you get four teraflops probably for double for the series x you get 12.15 teraflops and like 8k up to 8k which is like ridiculous The GPU will be different. Oh, 499. That's not bad. That is kind of like double, though. That's basically double. However, the, the processor will be the same, and the storage will be a little bit different. There's a few small differences. I was just talking about that fan. You see that fan right there? Ultimately, that cooling system right there. That way, the whole system doesn't overheat. I mean, look at the scale of it. You could put that anywhere. You barely even notice it. Now, people have made a bit of a meme of the design saying that it looks like a some sort of a laundry machine or uh, something like that. Like a speaker or some sort. Uh, what can, I mean, I don't mind it. Black and white, Stormtrooper look, a couple of different simple shapes. It's like an Xbox speaker. You do have a legitimate USB port on the front, similar to the other one. And also a sync button, likely for the controller. The Xbox button, which again appears to be backlit. This vent on the top of the unit. I flip it around to the back side. We have our Ethernet port. Uh, once again, two separate USB Type A ports, HDMI, storage expansion, and your power connector. Now, this one has feet on the bottom side, so it can be upright like this next to the Series X. And you can just tell how tiny it is when you compare the two pretty wild in fact it's almost i mean you could get four of these guys at least three you could definitely get three of these guys into there and then you also have feet down on the bottom here so you can lay it down which again i think this is how most people end up using it and when it's like this it's i think i'm gonna pull out a controller just so you can see the scale that i mean it's like two controllers wide and it's one controller deep this thing is tiny you can place it anywhere you could even travel with it you could go to your pal's house and it's probably like three controllers for like the uh the series what is that the x easily fit that into a, a bag or a backpack well i guess you could do it with either yeah so it probably makes sense as well to do a quick scale comparison against a playstation this is a playstation 4 that's been kicking around the studio for a while, there's been many versions of this, but this is... A lot of scratches on there. You must play that a lot. One of the popular ones in terms of scale. So typical PlayStation 4, and you can see how that measures up next to the Series X. From a volume perspective, obviously it's much deeper. The Series X is taller, depending on which way that you have it placed. But kind of... Slightly wider. Hold on one second. Google, how wide is the PS4? Has information from CNET. It's a uh, twelve by 2.8 okay google how wide is the xbox series x according to polygon if you were looking at the xbox series 10 from the top or bottom you'd see a perfect square the unit measures 5.94 inches wide 5.94 inches deep and 11.85 inches high according to digital foundry That's almost perfect. I guess
guess, commensurate in scale in terms of volume, just laid out a little bit differently. One thing is on this unit, you will see some people actually place a monitor right on top of it if they're cramped for space, obviously. And I'm talking about like a computer monitor, a smaller monitor. You may or may not do that over here. I don't know if the footprint is gonna allow for it. It's unlikely, you'll probably probably place this beside. And then when you compare the PlayStation 4 to the Series S, well, that's quite a big difference. They were about the same height, very similar in height, as you can see there. Very little difference in height, and then about half the depth of a PlayStation 4. So that's pretty impressive that they were able to cram everything into a little box. A one-handed holdable box. Sony has their work cut out for them because, as I've talked about on the Lou Later show many times, uh, they're scheduled, or at least the rumor is at the moment, that they're going to just put out a PlayStation 5 and a PlayStation 5 Digital. So, essentially, two models to compete with this one at price. Google. What is the PlayStation 5 Digital? According to Android Authority, the digital version of the PS5 is 100% digital, meaning it won't be compatible at all with games that come on a disc. In order to play games on the PS5 Digital Edition, you'll have to download the games online and store them directly on your console. That's one way how the uh, Xbox Series X and S is going to outbeat the PS5. Because one version is not even going to be able to um, have disc, whereas both those versions do, I think. I'm mistaken. I don't know. It ain't looking too good for PS5 users. Let me know in the comment section what y'all think about this video. Would y'all buy uh, the Series X or S? Or would y'all just go ahead and buy the PS5? Like, comment, subscribe. It's your boy Bob. Let me know what y'all want me to react to next. I can react to the PS5, the digital. Just let me know in the comment section. Um, I'm out, man. Peace. Follow my IG and Twitter at I am Bobby Welsh.